Mary Tessa began involved in the early 80s. In, well, I feel so weird sitting I'm going to be like this. In what show, Mary Tessa? What show are we going to discuss tonight? Barnum. Correct. And by Barnum, she means we're doing that second. We're doing the rink first. So, <laughs> I'm talking about oh, the in the early first. 80s? Yeah. Well, that was Barnum, too, 80. We'll talk about that after. The oh. point is, she did the rink and she understudied oh, what yes. megastar? Liza Minnelli. I was her standby. Take that in. Now Although, I'm gonna keep going. You want. she doesn't ever remember. She never remembers. Somebody said, that was your, who is that girl? That was your standby in the ring. No, she wasn't. She doesn't remember. Because it was Lenora Nemitz first. But, then, but you really were the standby, though. You I was the standby. It was Lenora was the standby first, and Lenora left. And then I came in. But wasn't Lenora the standby for Cheetah also? Yes. And then you only stood by for Liza. I only stood by for they Liza. They divided it. Yeah. The point is, Liza had to leave. Now, why did Liza leave the rink? And at what point did she leave the rink? And how much notice did she get? Go. Liza left the rink because she committed herself to the Betty Ford Center. She had... Um, uh, a month left on her contract or something like that? Two weeks? Two weeks left on her contract or something very short. Okay, now here's the deal. If you've noticed Mary Tessa, and I have, um, she's very freewheeling. And what I love is that I saw her in this comedy show recently, hilarious. I was talking to one of the producers from Jared Doe, and they were like, Mary changes her line readings every night. They're always hilarious and they're always different. She will not hold on to a joke, which I'm obsessed with, because I'm like, once I have my joke line reading, it never changes. <laughs> so my question is, when you were doing the ring, were you yes. the same way? Were you like, I'm free willing to do my own Well, sets? a little bit. I was much younger then, too, so I was really not as savvy um, as I am now. But was Cheetah, was Cheetah more... Cheetah is a machine. She's fabulous, but she's a machine. I would change things up, and, and she would keep things the same. And one night, she did something different in reaction to me. And I said, I got you. And she said, yes, and it didn't work. <laughs> Fast. <laughs> so got it. OK, Fast. so we're going to recreate the opening number. Now, Mary Tessa, how long did you go on for? Two weeks. And why did you go on for those two weeks? Because uh, Stockard Channing, who was coming in to replace Liza, was not ready yet. So they gave, Li they gave Stockard two weeks to rehearse. They put on Mary for the two weeks. And the big star took over. And how long did the ring last after Stockard took over? Not very long. Am I not very long? A year? Uh, no, like a month. Not even. Devastating. They could have kept you for six weeks and saved the money. The point is, we're going to do the opening number. So this is Mary Tessa. Now, you've not sung this since when? Since 1984. Leaving home. Tessa, understudied in the early 80s in what show besides The Rink? Barnum. Barnum. That yeah. was my first broad Broadway show. Okay, oh, that's why you said it, Bros. Okay, I have a couple things to say. Barnum was a circus musical, and when you understudied in that show, you had, a, a lot of, you had to have a lot of circus skills. Am I correct, Mary Tessa? That's absolutely right. What circus skills did you have? Absolutely none. No, I could juggle. I was cover? the swing for six chorus parts. One was a master juggler, one was an acrobat. One was a wire walker, one was a trapeze artist, and one was a world champion baton twirler, and then one sort of did a lot of little things. It ran for two years. This was like into the second. This was later in the run of the show. What if Mary assumes she would never? Never be on for the ever go world on. champion baton twirler. Okay, what happened? Go. I had to go on one night, and um, the, the, there was a big number, top of the second act, uh, Come Follow the Band, it was called, and it was a big, big uh, focus on the baton twirler, who she twirled three batons at once. Anyway, I got on, I did my best, I threw the thing up in the air, lost it completely in the lights, I spent the entire show just, they called it styling, styling and pointing to wherever the baton landed on the stage. Now let me push the images. She not only understudied the baton twirler, but she understudied something even more appropriate. No, I swung the baton twirler, but I understudied Terry White, who originally was Joyce Heth. An black! elderly black woman. Okay, so... Well, playing elderly. Yeah. Not elderly at the time. Hi, Jen Samar, laughing black background. Black woman, so I would go on, and, they, and the setup was Joyce Heth, the world's oldest woman. It was like a circus truck with a big poster with a big black face going like, ah. And <laughs> whenever I was on, there I, I was in 25 in my gray wig with my big white face going, ha. <laughs> and everybody's like, 
What? What's happening? Why Can't is afford she... a new painting. What is that? So we are yeah. going to recreate the song that Mary Tess has not sung since what year? 1980. Daddy time. Thank <laughs> you.